Welcome. Recent months have been full of many unique moments in the gallery, moments where we have evolved our regular approach to exhibitions and events to meet the physical and social challenges of COVID pandemic, while still honoring the importance of art in uplifting our spirits. We are delighted to share one such unique moment in the 54-year history of the gallery. Early this year, we were peripherally involved in the sale of a magnificent and rare painting by Pablo Picasso, a landscape painted in Mougins, France in 1963. It hung in our gallery for approximately four weeks, though COVID limited our ability to share it in person. One visitor who was able to see the painting was Sam Bach. We have worked alongside him and his art for over 50 years. His response to the Picasso and his general feeling about what our gallery has endeavored to do and to be for our patrons for this past year was very moving. We have asked him to record and share with you these responses. Thank you, Sam. Yesterday, yesterday was a day of ongoing treats. To Boston, from our house, from our comfortable house, the first time in a whole year. And all these thanks to your generous offer and to Ian's driving. Wow, wow, it felt like the cave of Alibaba when I entered the gallery. The show of the Bolinskis is absolutely extraordinary. Each image by Carrie a work of artistic merit. What we had expected was generously confirmed. And then Barbara's artworks were for us a true discovery. Beautiful, beautiful, and much more poetic, nostalgic, playful, and sad. With such intelligent irony that they merited a much, much longer contemplation than the time we disposed of. The richest of her smallest details speak volumes. This world then directly brought us to the in other incredible world of Steinberg, with whom she shares so many affinities. Between Barbara and Steinberg, there is no passport control. The stamps, the stamps in Steinberg's uh, paintings or drawings or prints become planets. I cannot imagine anybody describing America in a more poignant way. America and the human condition, overwhelmed by a bricolage of cultures or of the lack of them. Some of his incredible morals, made by pen strokes or, 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 or just a simple pencil, seem to be returning eternally in his work from January 6th in this year. His umbilical cord with the New Yorker magazine implanted in people's minds hides the tragic dimension of this great, really great artist, of his great art. His place among the great ones of this century is assured. Oh my, Steinberg, what an incredible genius. A black, powerful, menacing, impressive, and outworldly figure, full of incredible detail. What a step forward by this creative artist, Kek. My goodness, she is fabulous. He surprised us and gives us the chills on the way to the Picasso.
Picasso, my goodness, what a name, and what a story, what a man. The painting that I'm going to speak about was painted in Mujan. Mujan is a small village near Cannes. Picasso lived in Cannes in a famous villa called California. And there are some paintings done in California, of California and so on. But then he was um, tired of the mundane realities of the life in Cannes and he moved to a small village, not far from Cannes, called Mujan, which is much closer to the mountains, the so-called Alpes Maritimes that you can see in this specific painting. In Mougin, he found a villa that was built on top of a, an ancient um, peasant home. It was built by the Guinness family, who turned this ancient habitation into a place of great luxury. It was a 35-room villa. And Picasso uh, moved in there with his wife Jacqueline, who was about 50 years younger than he was. And this was also the home where he painted a certain number of landscapes. Now, Picasso is not known for his landscapes. He did not paint too many landscapes. He painted a series of landscapes in the late 50s and this specific painting in 63, I think, in Museum. This is by far the best of all his landscape paintings. I have seen a certain number of them, I have seen many of them reproduced, but uh, I was not prepared actually to see the original and to be so overwhelmed by it. Its size is perfect. Actually, it is bigger than what I remembered from reproductions and the sizes that I imagined. It evokes in it all that I could desire from a Picasso. The infinite space, the streaming of light from its clear sky, which is actually a hardly covered white canvas and the luminous surfaces of the of the lakes or actually the a small base which are there around Mujan. Just watch the richness of distances between these drippings and you can see that it is not by chance or maybe these were little private angels of these drippings that have put them in place exactly where they should be. And then the mountains, they are sheer music. They undulate, but they undulate as if painted by the hand of an orchestra director. You can, you can hear, you can really hear with your eyes the subtle variations. And then I was disappointed when I came out into Newbury Street and there was not a line of people waiting to see this painting. They don't know what they have missed.